Good morning, learners. Welcome to today's lesson. I had already started this topic previously, but I had to complete the very short, short topics so that when we start this, at least we have more time to concentrate. So in class five currently, we are almost through. We are now on topic four. And after topic four, we are going to topic five, which is political system and development. Then we'll complete class five work. So I want you to keep in mind whatever we are going to talk about so that when you start, maybe next year when you come in, you already have knowledge of what you are talking about. I'm only remaining with two topics, then we start maybe revision from there onwards. So when I give out an examination, I'm expecting that after completing the two topics that are remaining, when I give out the exam, I'm expecting everybody to be getting everything because we will be through with class five work. What we'll be remaining with is only revision. Now, I want us to start, uh, not to start, because I have already talked about this topic, resources and economic activity, and one that I talked about is traditional forms of farming, and traditional forms of farming, we talked about bush following and shift cultivation. Bush following is where I say that the land uh, is involved the clearing of large piece of land, a uh, portion of land, and cultivating it for some time, then coming back uh, when it is idle before moving to the next one. And shift cultivation is the clearing of large piece of land, then cultivating it until the soil is. Shift cultivation is the way I say that the way we are farming where there has no, the land is still, the vegetation is still flat, the vegetation is still there, there are a lot of trees. This land has never been cultivated. That is the difference between shift cultivation and bush cultivation. Shift cultivation, the land has never been cultivated before. So someone is coming up, clearing the area, those vegetation, start clearing the area first, then cultivate after clearing and burning everything. But in uh, bush cultivation, the land is there, they already prepared the land. The only thing that they did is someone went for another piece of land and now is coming back to cultivate the land after some time. That is the difference. So you have to know the difference between shift cultivation and bush cultivation. We also talked about subsistence farming. Subsistence farming is where I talked is the growing of crops for mainly for food. Growing of crops mainly for food. That is subsistence farming. And we were talking about finger mill, uh, finger millet. We talked about cassava. These are yams. We talked about arrow roots. We talked about vegetables. Those are subsistence, only grown for food. Then we came and talked about traditional forms of storage. We talked about traditional forms of storage. We talked about the grains were stored in the granary. We have pots, gourds, or meat was placed maybe under near fire in the, uh, in the kitchen. We put uh, the meat up where the smoke, this smoke will go and make the meat will dry. So those are just types of traditional farming. Now, I'm through, I've gone through what we talked about in this topic earlier. Now, I want us to talk about cash crops grown in Kenya. Cash crops grown in Kenya. And what is cash crops now? Cash crop. What is cash crop? What is cash crop? Cash crop, these are crops grown for commercial purpose, grown for commercial purpose. or commercial or sale. These are crops grown mainly for sale or for commercial purpose. So, when I say about cash crop, I'm talking about those crops that are mainly grown for sale. And this example, uh, these are examples of these cash crops are, and one thing that you, sh you should know that cash crops are mainly grown in large scale. 
That is the difference between cash crop and subsistence crops. Subsistence crops were, crops were grown, they were mixed farming and they were grown in a small portion, in a small area. But when I'm talking about uh, cash crops, I'm talking about those crops that should be grown in a large piece of land, large scale farming. This always happened in cash crop growing. Then, uh, they are mainly grown for, for sale. That is another thing that you should know. So somebody asked what is uh, cash crop. These are crops grown for commercial. Enter in your answers. If you get commercial or sale, it means the same. That's the same thing. So that is the meaning of cash crop. Examples of these cash crops, we have tea. Here is examples. We have tea. Pyrethrum, pyrethrum, we have uh, coffee, we have coffee, uh, we have maize, maize nowadays grown for sale, we have maize, we have flowers, we have flowers, sunflowers, we usually eat some sunflowers there, uh, we have sugar cane, we have sugar cane. We also have uh, vegetables, we have vegetables, cabbages, those are grown for sale. We have sisal, these are crops that are grown for sale. We have another example, sisal. We also have cotton, we have cotton. Uh, we, can also, we also have French beans, French beans. Uh, and it is see you can add there. Mm, which one have I forgetting? We also have wheat. Wheat man. Wheat. These ones are cash crops. They are known as cash crops. They are grown in large scale and they are only mainly grown for sale. Now let us go to tea. Let us start with tea. We are going to talk about each and every type of these crops. And today um, we are going to start with tea. Tea. The one that you put uh, in uh, that makes uh, drinks. That is where we are going to start with tea. And there are factors influencing factors influencing factors influencing uh, the growing of tea. Factors influencing the growing of tea. Now, tea is always grown in light skin and mostly it is grown in areas where there's uh, cold, wet climate. Now, I'll explain what factors is. What factors is first? Factor is something that can make, uh, factors in social is the something that can make tea to grow. Where can this tea grow? So what makes this tea to grow in Kericho and not in Mombasa? Well, those are the factors that I'm talking about. What makes this tea to grow well in Mombasa, in Kericho than in Mombasa? What does it require for tea to be grown? Why can't we people in Mombasa also grow tea other than those in Kericho? So those are what we are going to talk about. That was factors. What will determine the growing of this tea? I repeat, factors is what will determine the growing of tea in a particular area. So what will make this, why can't we people in Mombasa grow tea like those people in Kericho? This is the reason. The, the reason is there are different factors that require tea to be grown. The tea requires some conditions for it to grow somewhere. And one condition is that it requires high rainfall. One is requires high rainfall. Tea requires high rainfall of about uh, between 12, between 12 uh, millimeters. Rainfall is measured in millimeters. 12 millimeters, 1,200 millimeters and 1,680 millimeters. This is very high rainfall. 
that is required for T. So one condition for T to grow somewhere is that there must be high rainfall of between 1,200 millimeter and 1,680 millimeters. Another, it requires well-drained volcanic soil. Another is well-drained volcanic soil. In Mombasa, most of you have seen that the, the, the soil that is in Mombasa is sandy soil. Sandy soil. So tea cannot grow in sandy soil. Tea grows well in volcanic soil. Volcanic soil. And this volcanic soil is mostly family in highland areas. That is another meaning, uh, another reason why tea cannot grow in Mombasa. That is a factor. It requires cool temperature. Another requires cool temperature. Requires cool temperature. Requires cool temperature. In uh, that factor cannot apply here in Mombasa because Mombasa is a hot climate and tea requires cool temperature. It requires high altitude. It requires high altitude. High altitude meaning, we shall say, the higher you go, the cooler it becomes. So the high, the more you go up there, is where you'll find that the altitude there, altitude is the higher you go, the cooler it is. Meaning the up there it is very cold, so it requires high altitude. Meaning tea is always grown in highland areas. It is always grown, mainly grown in highland areas. Highland areas. So these are they are not. Uh, these are examples of requirements that you have to. That we are going to see a lot of crops. We are going to see a lot of crops. We are going to see tea, pyrethrum, coffee, cotton, French bean, maize, flour, sugar cane, and all that will base on factors influencing the growing of that crop in that area. So, you have to master what tea requires and what uh, maybe differentiate what tea requires and what things like sugar cane require. Which type of soil is grown in tea and which type of crop is grown for sugar cane. So you have to know the difference. That is why I'm insisting on well-drained soil. I'm insisting on cool temperature. I'm insisting on high altitude and uh, also high rainfall. So, those are just examples of uh, requirements that you need for tea to be grown. Also, what I'm forgetting is that you need a cool, suitable cool and wet climate. Cool and wet climate. Cool, cool and wet climate is also required and cool climate when I'm talking about cool climate I'm talking about the temperature of about 21 degrees Celsius the temperature should be between 21 degrees Celsius temperature cool temperature of about 21 degrees Celsius. So those are factors influencing the growing of tea in a particular area. Uh, in our next lesson, we'll be talking about the importance of tea growing, the importance of tea growing in an area and the areas where tea is grown. I want to wish you a nice week.